All right then, gang, so we've already seen that an expression can be true or false using a for loop in the last video. And that true or false value is a Boolean in Go, just like a Boolean in other programming languages. And I've just created a few other expressions that also result in Booleans, either true or false, and we're printing those to the console. So we have here an age variable, which is an integer, and we're saying here age is less than or equal to 50. So that's an expression that's going to result in a true or false value. In this case, it's going to be true because age is 45, which is less than 50. So that would be true. This one right here, age is greater than or equal to 50. Well, that would be false. Age is equal to 45. That would be true. And age is not equal to 50. Well, that would be true as well. So we should get true, false, true, true. So let's just run this. Go, run, main, go. And we should get those values down here in the console. True, false, true, true. Awesome. All right then. So one thing we can do with these expressions, these true or false values is use conditional code, otherwise known as if else statements. So let's take a look at those. I could say if, and then I could do some kind of expression that results in true or false. So I'm going to say age is less than 30 and then do a code block, so curly braces. So it's going to evaluate this expression right here. If it's true, then it's going to run whatever code is in this code block, much like an if statement in any other programming language. So let's just say here, fmt.print line, and we'll say age is less than 30. All right. So I can also do an else if and do another expression. So I'll say else if age is less than 40, then I'll print something else out, fmt.print line. And in here, I'll say age is less than 40. So right here, we're saying evaluate this first. If this is true, then just run this. And you don't need to even look at the rest of this else if, because this is true. So we fire this one. If it's not true, then it moves on to this else clause where we check another expression. Now, if this is true, it's going to run this code right here. So in our case, this would not be true and this would not be true. So it doesn't run any of the code. But I can also tack on another else statement at the bottom and then I'll do another print right here, fmt.print line. And inside here, I'll just say age is not less than 45. So in our case, this is false, so it doesn't fire this. This is false, so it doesn't fire this code. However, the else case catches all other conditions. So it doesn't matter that these are both false, it's still gonna run this code, all right? So if we run this, we should see only this printout at the bottom. So we can see age is not less than 45. If we change this to like 25, we should see this one right here, but that's the only one. So save it and run the file again. And we can see age is now less than 30. So that's a simple example of using if else statements. All right then, so I wanna do one more example and that is to nest an if statement inside a loop. And the reason I'm doing this is so we can kind of return to loops just a second and show you two key words. And those key words are continue and break. So let's first of all paste in some data. So we have a names variable right here, which I initialize to be a string slice. So it's a slice because we don't specify a length right here. And inside we just have five names. So I'm gonna cycle through those names using a for loop. So remember to do that, we say for and then index and value because we grab both of those values. The position is the index of so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then the value, which is Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, etc. And then we say colon equals range names. So remember, this is a bit like a for in loop, but instead of in, we use this right here. And then inside that, what I'd like to do is say if index is equal to 1, then we're going to do something. And what I'll do is first of all print something out. So fmt.print line, and inside that, I'll say continuing, I'll explain this in a minute. So continuing at pause, and then we'll do an index right here as well. So we output the index, which should be one. So the reason I'm saying continuing is because we're gonna use the continue 
keyword right here. Now, before we test this out, outside of the if block at the bottom of this loop, I'm going to say fnt.print line, and then inside, I'm going to do a template string. So in fact, this should be printf, so we can add some variables at the end. So I'll say index and value right here. And inside here, I'll say the value at position and then percent %v to output, first of all, the index in its default format is percent %v to output the value in its default format. All right, so what's going to happen here? We're going to cycle through this slice right here. And it's going to check if the value is equal to one, or rather, if the index is equal to one. Now, the first time it cycles through this, it's going to be zero. So it's not going to be for that. So it doesn't execute this code. So it goes down to the bottom and it will say the value of position zero is Mario. All right. So then it runs again. This time, index will equal one at this position. So we print out this line that says continuing at position one. And then we use this continue keyword. And what that does inside a for loop is say, OK, go back up to the for loop at the start. Don't continue down here, but continue with the loop. So break out of this current iteration, but continue with the loop. So it doesn't now come down here and execute this code. All right. So that's what the continue keyword does. So let's test that out. I'm going to save this, clear the console so we have a bit of room. And then I'm going to run the file again. Go run main.go and we can see right here the value at position zero is mario and we didn't add a new line so let's do that so that next time we do it it looks a little nicer but the next one starts right here continuing at position one so notice we don't have the value at position one is something or other we just go straight to the value at position two is yoshi and therefore this doesn't fire for Luigi. All right. So bad choice of name right here because I've just noticed this. But anyway, let's carry on. So what I'd like to do now is another if statement. And this time we're going to use a different keyword inside this block. So first of all, we'll say if index is over two, then we're going to run this code. And inside we'll say fmt dot print line. And then inside this, I'm going to say breaking at position and then whatever the index is and this time we're going to use the break keyword so what does that do well it breaks out of a loop completely so if the index is greater than two so zero one two at this point we're going to evaluate this it's true we're going to use this break keyword and that says break out of the loop completely so don't even go back to the top and don't continue cycling through the rest of the slice all right so now it's only going to go up to position two so zero one two once it gets to this point and it's greater than two it breaks out of the loop so let's save this and give this a whirl so go run main go so we get this then we continue at position one then we output position two, which is Yoshi. Once it's greater than position two, we see breaking at position three and we don't do any of the rest of the elements inside the slice. All right, so there we go, my friends. That's how we use if statements, else if and else, and these booleans, and also how we can use continue and break inside a for loop.